what's going on YouTube? Today we are doing something a little bit different. I don't know if it's necessarily different. This is something that I used to do all the time and I think I should kind of bring it back. Now, I know I promised you guys fishing after you watched me blow up a toilet. Uh, here's the deal. I walked outside, had everything loaded up, had the uh, all the ice augers and all the fishing reels and everything ready to go ice fishing and this is what it sounded like. Now you guys might be thinking, Flair, it's ice fishing. You can just set up an ice shack and uh, it'll block all the wind noise. But if I did that, it would look a little bit something like this. So to avoid that type of uh, really cringy video of just a bunch of wind noise and me flying a kite, I decided to kick it in the Fishing with Flare studio and make a, a video that could hopefully teach you guys something about bass fishing. Now I know a fishing video would be a lot cooler, but instead I decided to do this, put on a goofy hat, and prepare for the roast comments. I can see it now. Amelia Earhart looking ass. I know, but this is uh, this is better than no video, right? But I'm gonna get right into it. I'm going to go over my top five winter bass fishing baits. Now I know this video has been done by freaking everybody, so you guys are probably thinking, wow, really original flair. Uh, this is a video that everybody's been releasing. Well, here's the deal. I make these videos for spring, summer, fall, and winter almost every year for like the past three years, so I'm gonna keep the tradition going. I'm gonna keep at it, and I'm gonna go through my top five winter baits, and I'm gonna go through them in, in a specific order, the order of like warmest water to absolutely frigid cold water. Um, so like moving baits down to finesse baits and that's kind of how I'm gonna do this. As well as going over baits, I'm gonna try to go over some tips and techniques as to how to use these baits as good as I can. I know I can't be like out fishing, you know, with a rod and reel in my hand and show you underwater footage and stuff like that. I can't do any of that uh, because it's like literally negative three outside right now. So I'm gonna do my absolute best to help you guys kind of understand on how to use each and every one of these lures. So to start off, this is when the, if you, I guess if you're in like Texas, maybe like Florida or Louisiana, somewhere where it doesn't freeze. I mean, I guess you can't use any of these if it's frozen. But if it's like somewhat warmer water, you know, 40 degrees is pretty warm in the winter to me. You want to probably stick in it. I guess if the bass are shallow, you got to know if the bass are shallow or not. Sometimes they feed shallow, especially if you're on like a power plant lake. These are the baits that I like to go with. This right here is a more of a flat sided crankbait. Now this is important. You don't want to be throwing your normal like square bills in a time like this. The reason being is because with something like this with the flat sides, it has a narrower shimmy instead of a wide wobble back and forth like a normal square bill does. It just kind of shimmies back and forth. Bass don't want to chase a meal down. They don't want to. They don't want to hunt down a meal that's you know going out and for, they want to get an easy meal. They want to. They want a meal that's just kind of slowly going along, maybe looks a little bit wounded. Those are the types of meals that bass are looking for because bass in the winter are lethargic. If it's cold, they're gonna be slow moving. They're not gonna be running around chasing bait, schools of bait fish, unless, like I said, it's a power plant lake, the water's really warm. And in that case, you're just gonna have to do your own thing because that's not the type of water that everybody usually gets to fish. Another example would be something like this, something that's a little bit smaller, but yet it's still somewhat flat. It's not it's not completely flat, uh, but it's just not wide. You don't want a wide, like a big round wobbly bait. Uh, you want something that's gonna have a nice tight shimmy, like a little shad wrap would work. Also, another one that I don't have with me but that would fit into this category would be a lipless crankbait. Now that's something that moves fairly quickly, so that kind of goes against my whole chasing bait fish thing, but that is something that has a tight shimmy, so if that's the, the pattern that you see working, um, that's usually the bait that I start with right as you know the ice starts to get kind of starts to freeze in the winter so i don't know exactly where you guys are at in the country it really just depends i mean i've been frozen here for like a month but once the water gets like around 40 degrees if i think the fish are shallow if they're still feeding up um like it, that's pr pretty much the only bait that i would use now to get into like more of what i really will be throwing i very rarely throw something like this the reason why i included it though was because i know you guys live all across the united states and actually several of you guys live in uh, other countries so i wanted to include a bait that would pertain to you guys with warmer water. Now, if you're like me and live in like the Midwest or something and the water's frozen or maybe you've got like an, uh, an open area on like part of the lake, I know some of like ponds and lakes, half of it will be open. This right here, this is my go-to bait is something like this. It's just like a jerk bait. Jerk baits are really, really good when like half the lake is frozen or it's just unthawed or it's just about to freeze. The reason being is you want a suspending jerk bait that you jerk down there, you can bring it all the way down to however deep you know you want it, five, 10 feet, and you let it just sit there and it'll sit there 
again, easy meal, easy presentation, and it won't move a whole lot, and it, it just kind of sits there and uh, presents an, an, an easy meal. And also, the good thing about a suspending jerk bait is you can move it as quickly or as slowly as you would like. So if the water's warm or you're noticing very active feeding, I mean, you can continually, like if I'm fishing for smallmouth in the summer up in Wisconsin and I'm fishing a jerk bait, it's like a constant just jerking and hardly even pausing. But when I'm fishing for largemouth bass in like let's say Nebraska in maybe like February, right when the right when the ice starts to unthaw, I usually will jerk this thing down there and let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute at a time. I know that sounds like absolutely painful uh, to you guys, and it's painful to me. But if you're just having to catch fish, that is what I would suggest doing. Now moving on, so a, a hard baits aside, um, you know crank baits and stuff like that aside. If I'm noticing the fish are not super active, but the water is not like extremely extremely cold I'll go to like something like a jig now something like this this right here is a finesse jig That is usually my go-to but if I'm going after just really large fish if I know there's big bass in the lake or the pond I usually go with like a big football head something something with a, a little bit larger profile It'll also kind of stand up on end and uh, give it kind of a, a more natural presentation than like more of a flipping bait because uh, it'll just kind of have its pinchers up and slowly moving. And a finesse, a finesse jig, all a finesse jig is is just something lightweight and uh, just kind of small. A real lightweight presentation that has a nice slow fall. You get it down in those rocks and it's just kind of floating around through those rocks. Presents an easy meal. And then a, uh, a football head, a jig is something, maybe you're fishing deep, like 20 foot deep. You're going to want a big football head jig. And that is something that you can move extremely slow. So the finesse jig, you can move slow, but this you can move slow. The football head jig, you can move slow and maintain bottom contact. Meaning the, the, the jig will stay on the rock as you're just kind of crawling it along. Nice and slow, again, easy meal to where this thing's there and a bass just comes down and, and eats it. That's that's mainly the only, I'm gonna say the only time, most of the time when I'm throwing a, a jig like this is on rocks. If I think that the bass are feeding on crawfish in the rocks and not shad, they're feeding on shad, I'm gonna throw those reaction baits. If I think they're feeding on crawfish, maybe even bluegill, I'll throw a jig. Moving on down the line to uh, soft plastics. Now this is a bait that I hardly ever see anyone talk about as far as winter fishing, and that is a, a little fluke style bait. And the reason why I included this is because a lot of times in the winter, shad die off. They cannot survive in cold water, especially in maybe like ponds or like shallow lakes where they can't get deep to where the water gets so cold that they die off. So a lot of times on lakes that you can throw like maybe a spinnerbait and a slow roll it on the bottom, just kind of having those blades slowly turn. You can do that. I didn't include that because that's not a technique that I've caught fish on before. So I don't want to tell you guys anything to do that I personally have not had success with. Something that I have had success with though, is a fluke. This is not something you would think of maybe it's kind of erratic. You don't want something like this. You want to rig it in a certain situation. You don't want to have it weightless where it's just kind of floating around going crazy side to side. You would want this either super heavy, like maybe on a shaky head, or uh, just something that'll just kind of glide down nice and slow. Like I said, weightless. You just don't want to twitch it a whole lot. So you can have it weightless. You just don't want to work it like you would in the summertime. Mainly, I would suggest fishing this on the bottom. So put this on a big shaky head, maybe even something like this um, that's got a kind of nice big hook on it. Something that'll just keep it down on the bottom. The only difference between this and a shaky head is literally just the forge, the presentation, what you're trying to imitate. So if you if you know there's shad, if you know there's any type of white bait fish in that lake that you're fishing, I would suggest this over anything like a shaky head worm, a wacky rig, anything else that any other YouTuber or myself is telling you to use. Use a fluke. It's something that not a lot of them see that time of year as well. Not many people I know throw flukes that time of year. So that's a good time to throw that. Just it imitate. Just you want to make it look like something that's dying. Something just like a jerk bait. A suspending jerk bait just kind of sits there. It's just something kind of dying off. Same thing with the uh, the little fluke. Now, lastly, these are my confidence baits. There's two of them. This is like what I have tied on pretty much year round, uh, but especially especially in the winter time, anytime I can find open water. And that is a shaky head worm. Now, you guys see me throw this thing quite often um, year round. Like I said, summer, spring, fall. This is a very versatile lure. The other one is a like a Ned rig, little small. This is a small little three inch Senko that you could throw as well. So it really depends on what you what size either what size of fish you want to catch or just you know if how how active how hungry you think the fish are. This right here is about the most subtle presentation um, out there that you can that you that anyone can really throw is something like this on on a shaky head that just stands up has very little movement. Um, but it catches the crap out of fish. I catch so many fish on just a tiny little bait like this. Now you're not gonna go catch your trophy size bass, but in the winter, even five pound bass will eat a little minnow like that. You know, it's about that size. But if you are if you want something that's a little bit bigger, 
uh, maybe you're on a big reservoir or you're fishing a little bit deeper and you want something that's kind of a larger pres presentation that stands out, then I would suggest a shaky head. Now something that's got like a flat, flat bottom on it so it'll kind of stand up and it'll look something kind of like this in the water that just stands up. And how you want to work those is you really don't want to move them. You want to throw those out there and you just want to leave them. You just want to leave them just kind of sitting there and you can kind of quiver your line. You don't want to be hopping it around and stuff like that. That's not how you want to do it in the the winter in the fall in the spring in the summer yes you can do a lot more movements but you really just want to sit here and just kind of shake your slack line you don't even want to move your rod tip you want to shake this slack line with your rod tip and that'll just kind of sit there and make it quiver again an easy meal all winter fishing is all about easy meals if you're fishing in cold water again you live in florida this probably does not pertain to you whatsoever so i apologize if you live in southern california or arizona someplace like that this is for my homies, my Midwest homies uh, that are fishing in the cold, the cold weather and the cold water, you know, 30s to 40 degree. That's where this all pertains. If you're looking for anything else, sorry, this is not the video for you. But that essentially is the, uh, are that, those are the top five baits that I like using. Again, it's ice outside. Like you, you can't go, you can't open water fish. Like I can't even use any of this for like two months, but I know a lot of you guys can. So I want to make those videos for you guys. Now, ice fishing. Ice fishing in general, if you guys are wondering how I catch fish uh, while I'm ice fishing, well, I don't do it very often. I have done, I did, used to do it a ton when I was a kid. The best, the best, I'm just going to give you guys these tips. The best lures uh, to use, in my opinion, if you're trying to catch bass is a minnow. If you're trying to catch panfish is a waxworm. And if you're trying to catch trout, salmon eggs, red salmon eggs. Those are like the only baits that I throw just on like little teardrop jig heads. Nothing special at all. That's, but I'm telling you, if you just take a split shot and a regular like circle hook, uh, put a little minnow on there, drop it down there on like a tip up, you'll catch some bass. Get a little jig out of the wax room, you'll catch some panfish. And if you want to catch trout, little little floating salmon eggs work. Or corn. Or corn works really well for trout. So hopefully that helps you guys if you guys are ice fishermen and you don't really care about any of this stuff. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. I am so sorry that I was not able to get out fishing. It kills me just as much as it kills you guys to watch me sit in my basement and record a video. I really wanted to be out there, but it just it, it was it's just not a filming day. Um it's just not a good day in general. And I want to make sure that I only give you guys the highest of quality. That's all I've got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.